Hi, Derek. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Awesome, awesome. And thank you again for, uh, you know, again, honored to have you back, Derek. And, uh, you know, we have filmmaker Derek Wayne Johnson. Fans are familiar with your work uh, from Kings of the Underdog, uh, which was about one of your uh, mentors, you know, John G. Abelson. You also did 40 Years of Rocky, which was narrated by Sylvester Stallone. And just recently you did the uh, Stallone Frank That Is uh, film. You know, honored, honored to, uh, to have you back on today. Well, it's an honor to be back. I appreciate you having me on. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. And just recently you worked on the, uh, the Keep Punching uh, documentary, which is the documentary on the new director's cut of uh, Rocky IV, which is also narrated by, by Sly himself. Yeah, this time he's actually in it, uh, whereas in, in 40 Years of Rocky, he just narrated. Yeah, I mean, and hey, is it keep punching? Is it the making of Rocky versus Drago? I don't even know. Um, it's supposed to be keep punching, the present meets the past. That's what it says on the film. But when Sly put it on YouTube, it just says the making of Rocky versus Drago. So I have no idea what they're going to call it. But yes. That particular documentary I worked on. It was it was pretty cool. Did you uh, even flinch when they asked you to uh, to come work on the doc? <laughs> oh man, I don't know how much I should or shouldn't say, but you're my first interview for this documentary, and I'm just the editor, man. So I, you know, thank you for even having me on as just the editor. But how that came about was uh, Sly FaceTimed me and was like you know, I have this project and, and John Hertzfeld, who is a friend and is, of course, is in Stallone Frank, that is. So I've known John for a couple of years. And uh, we were just hanging out, talking. And uh, I was actually getting a, a new aerobic system, a, a, you know, a septic system put in in my new house. And so Sly and I talked about uh, septic systems for about 10 minutes. That was really funny. Um, and he knows a lot about uh, everything, I guess. Everything. And I was like, of course, I'll do it. And, um, and then John called after I talked to, uh, to Sly. And it was just really cool. They both just kind of hit me and were like, we want you to do this. And um, I was like, hey, I'd be honored to do it. So like a week later, uh, Sly FaceTimes me again from the set of uh, uh, the new film he just shot. Uh, it slips my, the my mind. The super, the Samaritan. Yes, Samaritan. He was just, I guess, hanging out uh, on, on set that day or whatever, or in his room. And um, we talked about it again. And I was just like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So John and I, we worked on that thing for five months. Wow. together um and it was just a crazy crazy ride what was your uh, your first reaction when now because i mean you're i'm a huge rocky fan and just to be honest you might even be a bigger rocky fan than i am but what was your first reaction when you heard that he was even going to revisit and touch rocky for i mean to me it was a perfect film but what was your first reaction when you heard that he was even going to dive back into this Oh man, I, I wish I had a good answer for you. I can't remember if I knew about that before this or yeah, yes, I did because of social media. So yeah, I think I knew about that briefly and was like, Oh, that's, that's cool. And then when he FaceTimed me to offer me the job to edit the doc, that's when I really knew this was, he's not just doing some, you know, like DVD special feature or something for Rocky Four, he really is transforming the movie. Like, and I started to realize this is a big, bigger deal than I, I caught wind of. So I guess my first reaction was I kind of was just like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Until he called and then I realized, hey, this is very interesting. And of course I've seen some of it and it's just like, whoa. So it's a completely different, better film for sure. Yeah, and you just you just touched on it. So you know, being in the editing room for the doc, you got to see a lot of uh, unused scenes that didn't make it in the original version that are going to be in the 
uh, director's cut version. Um, so you, you think it's going to be a, uh, a different film entirely or like the fans that love Rocky IV, how do you think we're going to feel after kind of seeing this? Well, that's a good point because Rocky IV is so sacred, right? There's either Rocky I people or the Rocky IV people. Yeah. I think the Rocky IV people are going to be really impressed because it doesn't, it doesn't take away from Rocky IV. Yeah. If he does anything, he adds to it and and now i don't want to like you know be quoted uh wrong here but it's he's 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 injecting more muscle so to speak into rocky four um and i think it's just gonna i think fans are gonna really really dig it almost like it's the same movie that everyone holds sacred but with more muscle injected yeah, you always want to, you know, learn, you know, a little bit more because there's only so much you could fit into a theatrical release. And usually the director's versions, you kind of get more meat and you get to kind of see more of the stories. And uh, I know just from seeing the doc, you know, there was a lot more dialogue that Drago actually said that we never actually got to really hear him speak in the film. And there's that clip where he when they were doing the press conference where he was trying to talk and then he kind of held himself. And that that was was really uh, intense, and I, I hope that makes it in the uh, the final version because we get to learn so much more about Drago in this film. It, at least it appears. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I yeah, there just there's so much gold that Sly mined out of uh, out of the original uh, footage, you know. So um, things that. You know, he talks about it in the documentary. And again, I'm just the editor. This is John Hertzfeld's film. He directed it. He, he shot it on his iPhone. Like, it's his thing. Um, but it was really cool to see him, uh, Sly, mining this gold and John capturing that. And then, of course, I got to play with that in the editing room. So that was a, it was a treat. One, one thing I wanted to ask you during our first interview that I forgot, um, I don't know if you ever saw, actually, this came across on YouTube, but there was a, a teaser trailer to Rocky IV, and I don't know if you ever saw it, but it was Drago that was actually, there was dialogue with Drago, and it may have even been uh, voiced of, and then at the very end, you see Drago and Rocky kind of combine in a ring, and then they punch, and then it stops, kind of like how Apollo and him uh, did. So did you, have you ever seen that teaser trailer? I saw it once, um, but yeah, I don't know much about it other than the one time I saw it. Yeah, it was cool. Again, you know, getting a chance to hear a little bit more dialogue uh, of Drago. So I'm hoping that we could see that. Um, I know we talked about what was your favorite Rocky film, but do you mind sharing who your favorite Rocky villain is? Wow, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I mean, I'd have to go with Apollo, um, absolutely, because he's the most real character. You know, it got cartoonish as it went on, and um, which is fine. But I would have to go with Apollo because, I mean, he's and he's not even a villain per se, and of course turns out to become his best friend. But um, you know, you're not rooting for Apollo; you're rooting for Rocky. So let's say opponent instead of villain. Um, it, but yeah, uh, gosh, who are the villains in those films? I would say uh, George Washington Duke is yeah, a true yeah. villain. Yeah. yeah. Um, Clubber Lang is a true villain. Yes. Um, of course, Drago has a turn, um, you know, and, and sees the light. Tommy so, Gunn becomes a villain at the end. Tommy Gunn becomes a villain. Um, so yeah, favorite opponent, Apollo, favorite villain, man, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. We'll leave it at Apollo for now. For I'll sure. probably think of it later. For sure. For sure. And, um, there's also a big debate and, uh, Sylvester kind of cleared this up recently. Um, there's a big debate that, uh, you know, Rocky, whether or not it's a sports film or a drama film. And he says that it's a drama. Uh, what's your take? Have you always thought of it as a sports film or have you thought of it as a, as a drama film? No, it's, it's always been a drama to me. Um, and, you know, I've had this conversation with John Abelson a million times. Uh, you know, Rocky is a love story. 
and it's a drama. Same thing with Karate Kid. It's not a karate movie. It's a drama. It's a love story between a surrogate father and, and this boy. So um, that's why they stand the test of time because they're dramas and they're love stories and boxing, you know, is the backdrop. So, uh, but, you know, I mean, of course they're sports movies at the same time, but if they were just sports movies, then they wouldn't, I don't think they would hold weight. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite sports film? Wow. Well, okay. If we take Rocky and the Karate Kid out of, out of the equation, (laughs) um, I mean, probably, well, again, is it a sports film, but then you have Rudy, you know, you stole mine. Um, You stole mine. Is it, is that yours? So let's call them what they are. Let's call them all sports films for this conversation. Um, Rocky and Karate Kid aside. So yeah, Rudy, for sure. Man, man, that, that's that's mine. That's mine. That's amazing that we both kind of uh, kind of resonate the same with, with that film. We can have a separate interview just on Rudy. Um, uh, you know, hey, I, speaking of that, I emailed Rudy Rudiger when I was 17. The and, actual Rudy? Yeah, and I got a response. And um, that was in 2000. And uh, he, you know, he just sent like a really nice little response back but yeah i still have that email somewhere well in my inbox from 21 years ago that last scene where you know you're you're gonna see whether or not he's actually gonna make it onto the field and then he gets on he runs that special teams play and then you know finally gets right on the line and then ends up getting a sack just that whole scene like you're just roaring you know with them there's there's very few movies that just kind of they they give you that um just that feeling where like, man, you, you feel what the character's feeling right there. And it's like the whole arena just erupted with them. It's just an unbelievable movie. That's a, again, another true underdog story. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even moments like I, I, I sometimes I just watch the ending of Rudy for to get that, that feeling, but even moments when he's crying in the dormitory because yeah. all hope feels lost and, it's just like, how many times have we lived those moments? So I think Rudy is just a, it's just a sweet, sweet movie. I love it. I love it. But anyway. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always going to pick your brain on anything, you know, Rocky or Sly related. And, you know, there, there's been, you know, some whiffs in the air of maybe there being a, a prequel series or maybe Sylvester picking up and maybe training on a new fighter. Any, any insights into that? Or are you kind of on the same boat as us? You know, we're just hoping and waiting for, for more news. I, uh, I think I may have told you too much already about FaceTiming with Sylvester and talking about septic tanks. <laughs> so, uh, he might be like, what'd you tell him that, man? Come on. <laughs> um, so, uh, I will, I'm, I won't comment on anything that I may or may not know. Yeah. On, yeah that, on that. And you, and you know, man, I'm, I'm rooting for you to, uh, to direct, you know, one of those projects. I mean, you know, the insights, uh, and out of obviously the Rocky films and also working so closely with slime and you'd be amazing at that. So I'm still rooting on that for you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I, I always spin this around, you know, with, with our guests that we invite, you know, what are some of the, when you're not working, what are some of the shows that you're binge watching? What's keeping you up at night? Oh man. I think you asked me that last time and it was, I think my answer was Cobra Kai and stranger things. Um, I haven't, I mean, I just, I haven't really binged since Cobra Kai season three last year. And then Stranger Things season, what was it? Three, two years ago. Yeah. There's been a little bit of a delay yeah, with COVID. Yeah. So I'm kind of just holding out. Those are the ones I binge because I watch a lot of movies yeah. and a lot of documentaries. So it takes a lot for a series to really like get me to binge. So, um, you know, of course, I'm waiting for season four of both of those shows to come out, and then I'll binge those for sure. Uh, what do you think of uh, of Terry Silver coming back this season? Well, I mean, obviously, that's amazingly awesome. Um, I was sad for uh, King of the Underdogs. I, you know, we tried to get in touch with everyone for the John Avildsen documentary. And we couldn't, 
I don't, I think it was like, we couldn't get in touch with him or he was busy or something, but we really tried. And, um, I don't know what happened there. That was so long ago, but I'm so glad that he's back. He never went anywhere. I mean, he just has a different career or at least, um, I think he's a writer maybe and things like that, but it's so cool, man. It's cool to have it. It's like having the gang all back together, yeah. you know, um, very exciting. Do you, as a fan, do you think we'll get Mike Barnes back too and get a full reunion? Well, I mean, I hope so. Uh, I, I really do. I see Sean's book on your shelf. Sean's a friend. He's a really, really cool guy. Um, I mean, I hope so. It would just be great to just have everyone alive yeah. from all three to just really, I mean, to just to show up. And, you know, if they went as far as like, say, in, in last season to show uh, the I forgot her name. Uh, the the girl from the typhoon from Karate Kid Two, oh, yeah, the one that he said that was ringing the bell. If they brought her, I mean, which is great, it was so great. But hopefully, they would bring these other awesome characters back that we all love. So, yeah, I don't know if you could see it in the uh, the camera, but Sean actually sent me that up top. Him and Daryl nice. Vidal. Yeah. So, so yeah, I that love that. Cool. I remember seeing that on your social. That's really cool. Man, that thing is is awesome, and it just barely made it up in there i need to, yeah, yeah. to show that but that thing is awesome but it's autographed from uh, you know daryl vidal and sean kane and i was honored for them to even you know send me that i was like man this is insane um so i'm looking forward to, to seeing those guys back and um any anything that you could share as far as any of your upcoming projects that we can uh, stay tuned that you're allowed to touch on uh well first i want to say both of those guys are just excellent human beings by the way daryl and, and sean um and daryl also being a friend as well as sean um projects so i'm in post-production right now on my latest feature film called bloodstreams and it's a crime drama thriller and I, so I, you know i put documentaries away for a bit and i'm back to what i really love is narrative feature films and uh yeah currently i just finished the rough cut last week and just trucking along in post, but uh, it's a really cool film. Um, it stars Han Soto, who um, had a brief uh, couple episodes, I think, in Cobra Kai. I've known Han for a long time. Um, Brad Mall, who played uh, Dr. Tony Jones for 22 years on General Hospital, who's like a mentor of mine. Holland Haley, who is unknown, yet she's just gonna blow people out of, their, out of the water. Uh, I've known her. She's an East Texas girl. I'm an East Texas guy. We met in LA. She's just great. And uh, also uh, Yuji Okamoto from Ooh. The Karate Kid Part 2. Ooh. And uh, he plays a really, really cool character. And I've known Yuji for seven years or so. And he just came in and annihilated the screen. So, uh, and there's other... Uh, obviously a few others that are just a tremendous cast so um yeah it's called bloodstreams we're in post right now and uh hopefully it'll come out in 2022 that's what we're aiming for and yeah it's just crazy it's like i did the, the rocky ford doc as an editor and then went right into bloodstreams as a director and producer and co-writer and editor the whole shebang so yeah, and, and you're such a natural, you know, filmmaker because, and, and I don't know if it's just me that notices this, but even your documentaries, they, they come off as films. They're not really like traditional documentaries. They're more like movies when I watch them. It's like an experience. Like the Stallone Frank that is doc. I mean, that was a movie. It, it didn't really feel like a documentary to me. Um, is well, that I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying is, is that your intent when you make, because that's how it feels when I watch your doc. They're not like traditional documentaries or like movies. That's exactly what I'm going for. Um, I don't, I always say like, let's treat every documentary like it's a movie yeah. because, you know, I get kind of frustrated with some documentaries. They're so slow or they like, they'll pause on like a leaf with a dewdrop on it with the sun in the background and they'll just hold with a little acoustic music and it's whatever. It's like, get to the point. 
yeah. like entertain me and educate me like move me let's go and i that's what i try to do with my documentaries and um and it was fun cutting the uh, rocky four documentary because it was like you know john and i would talk about that uh, constantly uh how to make this just you know hold your attention for 90 minutes and and make it not feel like a documentary make it feel like a movie or like you're right there with sylvester in the editing room so totally intentional um but then there's a lot of great things about documentaries that you can put into a feature film you case in point take say um you know it's famous uh, famous story about how william Friedkin did the french connection documentary style he just it, it feels like a documentary um but then there's also things like JFK, the editing in JFK, which won them an Oscar. It's just, it feels like a documentary, but it's a feature film. Yeah. So it goes both ways. And I think that you have to find that happy medium. And then I think it'll, you know, your, your projects will shine a little differently, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. And again, I, I, you know, became a fan of your work, obviously, before we even had a chance to connect. And I, I definitely, you know, love your style and, you know, want to see more of the, you know, your documentary films that you're making. There was a few actors that I messaged you. I said, hey, man, you got to do some work with these folks. I'm not going to name them now. But yeah, I love your style. Can't wait to see Bloodstreams as well, too. And um, I know I mentioned the uh, Stallone Frank, that is. If you guys haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. It's on Amazon. Very easy to watch. Um, it might even be free now if you're a Prime member. I think you can see it for free now. Um, so check that out. Um, Derek, I want to be respectful of your time. I want to sneak you back once I get a chance to see the, uh, the Rocky Ford doc and I can ask you uh, some more questions. And then also um, once we get bloodstreams out as well, too, I want to be able to talk about uh, a little bit more on the making of that. But just want to thank you for uh, joining today. And it's always a pleasure just picking your brain and, and hearing all these stories. Thank you, Derek. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. And I'll, I'll come back anytime as long as you're not bored with me yet. So thank no. you. Thank you so much, Derek. Really appreciate it. You too. Thank you.